going to hell. Um, I'm not sure if it's funny or not yet. Ah, motherfucker! Yes, a lot of questions. What's that? JoeBub.com. You ever heard of Joe Bubblewitz? JoeBub.com. Joe Bubblewitz. Meet Joe Bubblewitz. This independent financial broker finds himself doing way more than just crunching numbers. And I got teased every day. Meet Mike McGee. A troubling childhood leads him into a career of poetry and comedy. Diaper boy, pants crapper, you name it. Meet Kyle Grooms. We'll give you an in-depth look with what this New Jersey native's been up to. This. 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 Is, is comic, comic life. life. This is my nice suburban street I grew up in in Perth Amboy. Uh, my mother moved us here from Linden. New Jersey uh, to here, you know, this when we came here, this was like we were the Jeffersons, man. We were moving up. We had a swimming pool in the backyard. So this is my mother putting all her chips together and getting us out of uh, Linden, you know. And then Linden changed right after we moved here, like 84, 85. That's when Linden kind of start getting bad and going dark, you know. <sighs> Factory started closing. Crack came in like rat poison. People came out, ate it. And uh, now my old neighborhood's not as hot. But this was lovely, man. We had good neighbors. Uh, yeah, Rich is uh, my neighbor. He's been here too for a long time. So, And all these people are still here. But uh, naturally, I gravitated over here because, you know, you had a lot of black people here, Puerto Ricans. Uh, this is where the basket, they played basketball here. This is where I hung out. I had a paper route here. Um, you know, it was just a fun place. And then I also hung out in the park over there, too. There's a park back there. You know. Matter of fact, my brother got shot in these projects from some dudes from Newark. Huh. I came home one day, and it was a... a, a a note on the door that said, Eric got shot. I know Eric is my brother and got shot. Now some sort of comeback I came up with. I just got balls and just did it. And I said it and the kid was stunned. And then he started laughing and he was totally laughing with me, you know, and he's like, and all the other kids that were around him were like, like, man, that was hilarious, McGee, you know, and I'm like, all right. But at home, my family knew me as a funny kid. But at school, I was just the shy loner, you know. Um, and then finally, eighth grade, I just busted loose and I started becoming a funny guy. And then all through high school, I was class clown. And, and it just, that was the next step. To art when I was in school and uh, making fun of people, making fun of people's clothes, shoes, hat, boot. Uh, every morning, we would sit on these cinder blocks and crack on each other. Anybody, all my friends, you know, look at your hat, look at your shoes, you know, that type of stuff. I went to Miami, and um, there was a, there was like a, a lot of people who moved from New York, Boston, up north to Miami who were really into hip hop, and there was like these underground scenes where we would go and dance. I used to party, man. Fucking clubs and shit. I think the club is packed. The club is packed or something. Guys get turned into perverts when the club is packed, man. I know you ladies have been victim of this shit. Club rubbing, you've been a victim of club rubbing. That's when the club real packed and a dude walk past you real slow like this.
there for about 16 years now. And uh, they had a comedy club at Jesse's, which is now Savoy's in Yardville. And every Thursday they did comedy, and I went there every Thursday, and I said, you know what, I could do this. Fortunately, unfortunately, you know, what got me a detention in high school now, get me, now gives me a paycheck, so it's not such a bad thing. <laughs> Number nine. This school's like a 15-minute excuse to get out of class. I never understood my third-grade teacher. Every time we had a flyer drill, she'd always line us up single file according to size for a flyer drill. I was like five feet ten in third grade. Well, Mrs. Thompson, what's the philosophy here? If I can pull people, burn slower? <laughs> 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 Twenty hours detention. I thought it was worth it. <laughs> no one answers. Stage time. It's, it's a struggle just to find yourself. The struggle. The audience is a struggle. You know, uh, material. Just finding yourself is a struggle. I'm inside the car wash. This is the bathroom that I used to uh, freshen up in, in between my day job and doing shows at the Improv. And I would get off work at around 6 o'clock, and I had an 8 o'clock show at the Improv, so I would come in and use their bathroom to clean myself like a prostitute. And I, and I watched an old tape of myself, and I was like, ah. You know, it was, I wasn't even telling jokes. I was just making fun of the crowd, you know. Look at this nigga here. Happy <laughs> Because that was a style that we learned that, at that time, you know? You either an ugly man or a handsome gorilla. Oh, you don't know nothing about this, yo. You don't even know nothing about this. Fake ass gold chain. You went to Sears and bought that shit off a of spool. <laughs> you said, hey, man, let me get 20 yards of that gold. And that's all, that's really, I was good at that already from high school. Talking about people. Look at this nigga, your motherfucking shoes, blah, 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 you know? These girls with the little titties and look at it's tough, man. You know, uh, you know, if I had to think what I did the first year, just to just, you know, I used to try drive an hour and a half just to make twenty-five dollars. I don't actually live anywhere. I haven't, I haven't had my own room in anywhere in a house or an apartment in three years. Like homeless people and break dancers, like cardboard. <laughs> We could just teach a homeless dude how to break dance. So it'd, it'd make more money. Yes. Um, I I am the the eternal couch surfer, you know. Uh, and because of that, I have a lot of friends everywhere throughout the world. But I see all of them once or twice a year, and it's always because I'm touring through their their neck of the woods, you know. This is for the tired and for the dreamers. For the families that will never be like the Cleavers with perfectly made dinners and sons like Wally and the Beaver. All comics, no matter who they are, they've all had some rough stories. Uh, you know, I I did a gig where um, I, I went to the place and it was a, it was a bar on a one-nighter. I think it was in near New Brunswick area. And I walked in. There was no other comic. It was just me. And, uh, you know, I asked the owner. I was like, you know, where's the other acts? They weren't no other opening, opening acts. And um, basically, he's... I, op I was opening up for a jukebox. They played so for 20 minutes, and then they brought me up. And I w there wasn't even a stage. I was behind the bar. It was an oval-shaped bar. I was behind the bar telling jokes as, like, bartenders were like, basically going right in front of me, back and forth. It was really bad. Accept bombing, and not accept it, but appreciate what it does to me because it burns my ego. And, it, and after a, a day after I bomb, I'm, I, I'm, I'm a better comic. You know what I mean? Because of that, it burns that part of your ego and makes you focus. This is a really unstable business, and I'm not that my personality is I like to have stable income. So I, uh, I've been a financial broker for the past, probably about the same time, about 15 years. Perform the function. Every so often, they'll question your command. It's frustrating. I think I want to delete that file. Are you sure you want to take the phone? I'm going to turn off my computer. Are you sure you want to turn off your computer? <laughs> I don't know, maybe I don't. What do you think? <laughs> I should have smoked that pot today. <laughs> I was grown by the time I was doing comedy, so I started at 25. I quit my day job when I was 30, so it was like, what could my mother say? I'm an adult, you know? If you work hard or rob or kill somebody, <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger couldn't speak English, now he governor. Motherfucker <laughs> still can't speak English. That's some amazing shit. 
Because I know I couldn't go to Austria and become a governor. They would laugh at my black ass. I'm like, governor, you vanka to be governor? <laughs> no, nigga, schnoggin. No, nigga, schnoggin. And I just always knew I wasn't a nine to five kind of guy, you know. I, I, I'd, I'd get a job, and then within three months, I'd get sick of it. So in 2003, um, I got in, I, I was involved in Poetry Slam from 1998 all the way till, till today. Um, and Poetry Slam is just poetry competition. Take it easy on the wine, because you got another 45 minutes till show. Jot time, jot time. You know, you can be dirty or clean. Are they uptight? Are they not uptight? Are they drunk? Is there any belligerent drunk, uh, you know, people in the audience? You're going to be belligerent on the show, are you? <laughs> Maybe not belligerent, but funny. stood up and said, puss ass nigga, I'll buy you fuck nigga, you don't know me like that. You was like that, you was yelling and shit, and, like, and I kept going, you know, I wasn't gonna stop. And the security grabbed the bro. Wait for me, nigga. <laughs> I'm gonna kick your ass. I ain't always wear glasses. Sometimes you do private parties where people aren't listening to you. They're not listening, and I've done a couple of them um, where, you know, you're in front of 200 people and they're not, they're not even listening to you. It's like you're doing it in front of a mirror. Uh, you know, that's happened. Kentucky! Kentucky, you fucking lost. <laughs> we smoked too much pot in the car, we forgot to stop. <laughs> now, big buildings and people to talk normal. This must be Philadelphia. <laughs> Woo! Nah, man, I can't stop doing this shit. What else am I gonna do, you know? Fuck yeah, I'm gonna do. Yeah. I, might, I might drop this and pick up a uh, backup dance. I'm like, yeah, just thinking of coming out of retirement. <laughs> I want to stomp the yard. I realized that comedy should be everywhere. Because when you're an artist, you paint your own pictures. And sometimes the world don't agree with your picture. Who's, who sings that song, uh, I'm too sexy for my hat, too right sexy? Right. Kirk, look at it. This man is dying of cancer now. Shining, baby. Mama is always hopeful, and he wants to see a brighter future for all Americans, so that it doesn't matter whether you're black, you're white, you're red, you're brown, you're purple, or yellow. <laughs> 